This video is brought to you by Rotato. Build beautiful app showcases, designs, and 3D mockups in any device with Rotato. Head to iosacademy.io slash Rotato to get your copy now. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to be learning all about Firebase Cloud Firestore, which is a document-based uh, database available to you on Firebase. So here's what we're going to put together. On the left here, I've got the Firebase uh, Firestore dashboard showing, and on the right, I've got the app. So we're going to type in something into this field here. So we'll type in uh, another Swift video. And when I hit the return key, you'll notice two things. You'll notice not only did the label change here, but we also changed the data here, you know, in real time in the database. So we're not actually setting the label here, uh, you know, by hitting return. What we're doing is we're observing the database for any value change. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about how collections and documents work and how to bring this whole thing into your project. So if that all sounds good, make sure you start by hitting that like button down below. It helps out the videos and the channel quite a bit. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and into iOS and Swift. That all said, let's get into the video. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project here. We're going to stick with the app template under iOS. Let's go ahead and call our project Firestore example. Make sure your language is set to Swift, interface is set to storyboard and lifecycle UI kits. We're going to be doing everything programmatically. So go ahead and continue and save the project wherever you'd like. And the first thing we want to do is actually bring in the dependencies for Firebase. So I'm going to actually close up uh, Xcode there. We're going to open up terminal and let's go ahead and cd into our project and run the following command pod init to initialize Cocoa Pods as well as a semicolon and open pod file. And that'll go ahead and open up the newly created pod file. And we need to bring in two things. So we need to bring in first and foremost Firebase core, which is uh, as the name implies the core functionality of Firebase. And the next thing you wanna bring in is Firebase Firestore. Make sure you go ahead and lowercase the P there, otherwise it'll give you a weird error. Go ahead and go back to terminal and run pod install to bring in those dependencies. It should be fairly quick. The first time you run it, it might take around, I don't know, 10 seconds or so, not too long. But once this is done, we're gonna go ahead and close terminal. We're gonna open up our project folder and we're gonna jump back into our XC workspace. Now that we've got the dependencies installed, we need to actually go and set up Firebase uh, on the Firebase console. But while we do that, let me go ahead and uh, expand the Xcode window here. And we'll also select a simulator from our list. We'll go with the 12 Pro Max. And we'll let this compile here in the meantime. So let's go back to uh, a browser, head on over to firebase.com and sign in and get to your console. We're going to go ahead and create a new project here. I'm just going to give it a name of Firestore. Let's call it Firestore example to be a little more specific. We're going to continue and pretend like we read all of these terms because we know what we're doing. We're going to go ahead and select a default accounts. And it's going to start putting together a Firebase project instance in the console here. After this is done, we're going to actually need to still add the iOS app into this project here. So just bear with it a few seconds should not take too, too long. And then we'll focus on actually reading and writing data into Firestore. So once we've created it, we'll land on this page. We wanna select iOS to add an iOS app instance. We're gonna paste in our bundle ID. I actually copied that from right here in your uh, project navigator. Yours will probably be different. And that's actually only the required field. So go ahead and continue. And this is an important step. So it's gonna give you a uh, property list file to go ahead and download and bring into your project. So I'm gonna go ahead and download that and just drag it to my desktop. And over here, we're just gonna keep on hitting next since we've done all of these steps already. So just hit next a few times and you are good to go. While this is compiling, we can actually just hit this uh, stop button really quickly and just drag in this uh, new file that we just downloaded from the Firebase console. This configuration file has more or less all of the information that your project needs to connect to Firebase. Once we bring that in, go ahead and uh, go to your app delegate and import Firebase. 
And in your application did finish launching function, you can go ahead and say Firebase app dot configure and go ahead and hit command R to build and run once more. And while that's doing that over there, let's go ahead and set up our Firestore instance here on the dashboard. So on the left hand side, we're going to go ahead and of course we're going to select Firestore. And once this page loads up, we're going to go ahead and hit create database. It's going to ask us if we want a production or a test mode. We're going to stick with test mode, which is uh, going to set up our rules to be a little more lenient in terms of reading and writing. Next up is going to ask which region we want it to be in. We're going to stick with the default here. Feel free to change it per wherever your users are in the world and go ahead and hit next. And it's going to do its thing and create your Firestore database instance. Once this is created, we're going to modify a rule uh, to be a little more lenient, and then we're going to finally get into reading and writing to our uh, database here. So once it's created at the top here, select the rules tab, and you'll see that it gives you this if block saying, you know, read and write if the date is prior to this timestamp. I'm just going to get rid of that and the colon here. It uh, makes our life easier in terms of, you know, public access to this database. From a security perspective, this is not good at all. You should never ship this in a production app, but we're just doing a demo, so that's all right. So back here in our actual uh, you know, documents data section, you'll see we have this option to create a collection, and this is pretty important. So the notion of this uh, you know, document-based database is the root is collections, and collections can hold documents. Documents can further hold collections, so on and so forth. So it goes collection docs, collection docs, you know, as far down as you want to create your hierarchy. Now, each document can have a dictionary in it, which will actually hold the values. So let's go ahead and uh, do some reading and writing in Xcode. So it looks like our project has successfully compiled. We'll get rid of my antivirus friend there. And let's jump into our view controller where we're going to actually add a text field and label to read and write into uh, our database. So let's first start by importing Firestore. So this is going to be Firebase Firestore we're going to import. We're going to create a reference to the database. So I'm going to go ahead and say Firestore. Let me actually call it database, probably a better name. And this is going to be Firestore.Firestore with parentheses just like that. Now to read and write to you know anything in the database, we need to have a document reference so I'm just going to actually uh, create two functions here. Um, the first one is going to be, you know, write data. And this is going to take in some sort of text, uh, which will be a string. And what we'll do is we're going to create a uh, reference to a document. So we're going to say docref uh, is going to be database, which is what we created above. And we're going to create a document. So you can actually create a document or get a collection by saying, something like collection, you know, do something in here, dot document, but that gets pretty verbose. So the alternate to that, which what I recommend you guys do is you can just say, get me a document reference and you can provide a path with slashes. So what I'm gonna do is we'll say, let's see, iOS Academy slash example. So the first thing here is the collection and the example will be our document. And all we're gonna do here is we're gonna say doc ref, and we're gonna set data on it, which is simply going to be a dictionary. And I'll go ahead and say, let's go ahead and call it text. And this will just be the text that is coming in from our uh, actual parameter, pretty simple. The next thing we're gonna be able to do is we're gonna to wanna to read out this data. So I'm gonna throw this into view did load and we're gonna say doc ref, and we can go ahead and say get document, which gives us a completion handler with a document snapshot and an error in case you know something goes wrong. In the actual block here, we're gonna make sure that we have data. And the way we get data is by saying snapshot.data, super creative, I know. And then we're gonna make sure that the error is nil to make sure nothing actually went wrong. Let me go ahead and make sure that is correct. Yep, data is data, just like that. Uh, this needs a question mark because snapshot is in fact optional. And for the time being, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is we'll simply print out data. So go ahead and hit command B. Everything should still successfully be compiling. We just now need to set up a nice user interface to actually you know, do something here. So 
we need to create a text field and a label and i'm going to go ahead and create it programmatically here feel free to create it uh, you know in storyboard if that's uh you know how you build your ui slightly subjective at that point let's go ahead and create this label here with a pretty basic anonymous closure if you haven't seen this pattern before uh, i use it all over the place and you know um, it's pretty clean as well so definitely take a look at my other videos if you've never seen it so we'll create that label there and let's also create a text field here so we'll just call it field it'll be a ui text field and inside of this guy we're going to say field is also a ui text field we're going to go ahead and return said field let's go ahead and add a placeholder on it we'll go ahead and say uh, enter text dot 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 and let's see let's also add a nice border around it so we can actually see the edges of the field so we'll go ahead and say uh, it's layer border width is one and let me just copy and paste it here and make this guy border color and this will be ui color uh, dot black dot CG color, just like that. We need to go ahead and add uh, this stuff on our view. So we'll say view, add subview, the label, the actual fields. And we're also gonna want to set the fields delegate. And the reason we're gonna do that is we need to get uh, the event when the text field uh, returns, AKA the user hits the you know return button on the keyboard. Um, so you wanna make sure that you conform to the UI text field delegate. And from the delegate, we want to actually uh, implement the function should return for the text field and return true. And let's go ahead and add view did layout subview so we can actually assign some frames to our label and uh, field. First, what we're going to do is our field. We'll say its frame is CG rect. And let's do 10 from the left. The top will say view dot safe area uh, dot top plus 10. And let me go ahead and start line breaking this so it's a little cleaner to read. Width is going to be view.frame.size.width minus 20. And we'll just make the height 50 just like that. And let me also go ahead and do the label. What I'll do is copy and paste it for the sake of being lazy. The X can still be 10. The Y is going to be the same plus we're just going to add 60 to it. The width can also be the same and the height will go ahead and make 100. So let's see. So now go ahead and hit Command R. We should still be compiling and we should see our actual UI now. So here is our field. We don't see a label because we don't, you know, we're not setting any text in it. But when we hit the enter key, we want to go ahead and save our data. So all I'm going to do here is we are going to say if let's text is text field dot text. And I'm also going to validate that the text is not empty. What we'll go ahead and do is we're going to call this function here, which is write data. We can actually rename this to be save data. So I'm just going to go ahead and say save data, and it'll be text just like that. So let's go ahead and uh, try to type something in and save some data. And we can validate here if it shows up once we hit enter. So I'm going to go ahead and tap in the text field. If you don't see your keyboard, you can come up here to the drop down menu, go to IO keyboard, and you can toggle the software keyboard and it should pop up. Let's go ahead and enter in some text. So we'll say iOS Academy is awesome. We're gonna hit enter and you should see the keyboard go away. Uh, this is a simulator pop-up, kind of irrelevant. But let's come back here and we should now see here, uh, sometimes you need to refresh it, sometimes you don't, but go ahead and refresh your page here. And let's see, we should see a new entry under our iOS Academy collection. There should be one document in here, which we call the example. And inside of it, we should have a dictionary with text as the key and whatever I typed as the value. So boom, it is, it is definitely working. Um, what you'll notice is we do wanna get the uh, label to show whatever we've entered. So we already actually wrote that here in view did load. And this get document call will basically do a one-time query uh, and it'll actually go ahead and get you the data back. So let's go ahead and uh, try to get the text out of this uh, data and data is a dictionary so we're going to go ahead and say text as a string and if we get that text we can go ahead and assign it to the label 
So let me go ahead and do this. And I'm gonna go ahead and also make uh, this on the main thread. Since we're in a closure here, we don't wanna do UI work on the background thread. We also wanna say weak self here so we don't retain um, the reference itself and cause a memory leak. So go ahead and hit Command R. And you should now see when you run your app, you'll see the text in the label right below your fields here, which in fact we do. Now there's one more bonus that I wanna throw into this video and that's real-time observance of documents. So in theory, if we go ahead and type in something new here and hit enter, it would be kind of cool if this label just automatically updated based on you know when something changes here in our database. Um, because some, it definitely changed here, but we're not going to get the new label value until we, you know, close and rerun the app, which is kind of annoying. So Firebase also uh, offers another thing that you can use. I'm just going to comment uh, this out. What you can actually go ahead and do is you can add an observer onto a document. And that observer, uh, similar to the real-time database from Firebase, if you guys have used that before, uh, we'll actually go ahead and fire whenever it changes. Um, so what we could do is we can do a snapshot listener is I believe what we want. Let's go ahead and read it. So uh, this add observer registers as an observer to receive KVO. That's not what we want. Uh, let's see, add a snapshot listener here as well. Let's just go with this first one here and see what we've got. So here's add a snapshot listener. It does not take any parameters. Uh, but it actually gives you the exact same closure back. So this is snapshot and error. So what we can actually do is, let me be super lazy and let's copy this whole thing from this bottom one here. And we can actually literally just paste it in and everything should work identically. The only difference now is um, whenever we actually change the data, it should go ahead and uh, actually update it because we're listening to that document for changes. So make sure you do weak self. Go ahead and give this a run. And let's go ahead and type in something new into our uh, field here. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in uh, Firestore is pretty easy to use. Let me go ahead and hit enter and boom, you see Firestore is pretty easy to use. So uh, it's pretty great for real-time updates as well. If you're building you know, any type of real-time application, you know, I'm building a couple of courses right now with a uh, Firestore integration and I super love it. And, uh, you know, I, it's backed by Google. So I definitely do recommend it. It's pretty easy to bring in, but, uh, but that's basically it. That's all I've got for you guys today. So Firestore, a quick recap, you just bring in the dependencies, you know, read and write directly to collections and documents. Make sure you configure the dashboard here and you are good to go and up and running. So if you guys found this video useful, if you enjoyed it, definitely don't forget to smash that like button down below, helps out quite a bit. Leave a comment down below. Do you guys use Firebase in your own applications? I'd love to know how many of you actually use it in things that have shipped to the App Store. Subscribe to the channel for daily Swift and other iOS uploads. Uh, love hearing from you guys in general. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.